Hey, how's it going out there? It's time for VoiceOver Body Shop, and tonight we have a very special episode. Joining us are Andrew Peters and Darren Robbo Robertson from all the way down under. Amazingly, Is say hi, ironic? guys. You that can they're see below us today. Yeah, uh, hey. it's like a wink a dink. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Brady Bunch. Yeah, yeah. yes, that's right. <laughs> We're going to talk about uh, demos and their uh, their new demo production company, and look, talk a little bit about what really goes into a good demo. So, if you've got a question for them, because after listening to this for a bit. You're going to have questions for them, and you like, can throw them. what the heck did they just say? Yeah, what are they talking about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Add What's more purple, wallaby, add orange, more then? orange. Yeah, that sort of What's thing. What's a quokka? What's a wallaby? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, we'll get back to the Victorian English in just a minute. In the meantime, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop right now. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, the home of Harlan Hogan's signature products. Source Elements, the folks who bring you Source Connect. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. VoiceActor.com, your voiceover website ready in minutes. VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for voiceover success. And by World Voices, the industry association of freelance voice talent. And now, here's your hosts, Dan and George. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Woodham. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO BS. Well, in a world gone mad, we've decided, well, let's just keep doing our show and let's have peace amongst all the voiceover community. Uh, oh, boy. That's rough fair. week. Rough week. And, you know, lots of and, you know friends, relatives, people over on the other side of the big ponds. Uh, you know, all our best wishes go out to them and hopefully we can have peace there shortly. Yeah. Anyway, tonight we are talking with uh, a couple of great guests all the way down from Oz because uh, they have a new demo production company and uh, we were working on a new conversational demo for me last week. So we're going to talk about it. Let me introduce our guest. Andrew Peters is one of the top voice actors in Southeast Asia, uh, the United Arab Emirates, Australia and New Zealand. Heard literally by millions of people every day. And I think you've actually heard him on a Harlan Hogan commercial a couple months ago. <laughs> uh, Darren Robbo Robertson is an audio production specialist with 35 years experience. They are both co-hosts, along with George and Robert Marshall, the founder of Source Connect, on the popular and geeky podcast, The Pro Audio Suite. And together they are co-founders of Robbo and AP's International Voice Demos, Let's welcome Robbo and Andrew to VoiceOver Body Shop. Hi, guys. Hello, mate. Good. Guys. Which I was going to say good morning, but it's good afternoon for you. It's, it is. It's, yeah. yeah, we you know say it's... Good day. Yeah. Good day. Good day. Good day, mate. Yeah. How are you going? Yeah, oh, I've got so, to take you to task first, Dan, because the the geeky podcast. Yeah. I, I kind of feel like I'm a long way from geeky. I don't know. But that was oh, the whole yes. point. That's There's the way George describes it. Particularly <laughs> it, geeky. Is, it is a bit geeky. We do. Let Robert, geeky don't let Robert on the show. Yeah. On the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, keep Robert away. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, you guys have you know you, you're both very accomplished at what you've been doing. We we've, we've all been as, as we were discussing last week. We've all been in the business about the same length of time. Amazing that even. You know, where you guys are, my my career sort of paralleled all the stuff stuff you guys were doing, only, you know, ten thousand miles away. Uh but uh you guys have partnered up with uh with this new venture of yours. What influenced you guys to to start this venture of you know doing voiceover demos internationally? Who wants to go first? Well we kind of fell into it, funnily enough. It was through um our podcast, uh the Pro Audio Suite. We um we teamed up with Centrance to give you some background to come up with a the passport uh, VO uh, interface. Um, and as part of that, as part of the launch of it, we were giving away uh, some some stuff for people to to pre-order. 
And AP and I sort of went, well, what are we going to give away? Andrew being a voiceover artist and me being an audio engineer. Uh, for Robert and George, it was a little more obvious. So I said to AP, well, why don't we make a voiceover demo for someone? And he went, yeah, that's a good idea. So, um, so mm. Mimo, so Mimo Sorceda, uh won it and we did one for him. We had such a good time doing it and he was so chuffed with the results. We sort of looked at each other and went, hmm. We might be onto something here. Could be so, awesome. um, <laughs> so, yeah, we chuffed fell into is, it. Chuffed yeah. is a good thing. Chuffed, yes. Chuffed. Well, it's funny because Robbo, Robbo's been making, in fact, he's made a couple of demos for me in the past. And um, I think when we did this, uh, the demo for Memo, Memo's demo, um, <laughs> we kind of clicked and went, actually, there's something unique about what we're doing here because we're mm. coming at this from both sides of the glass. And, uh, and it also became quite obvious because we didn't share our edits with each other. So we did them separately. And then without listening to either, like me listening to Robbo's or he listening to mine, Robbo then got them all, did a mix, and then we sent them off as an A and a B to Memo and then got him to choose which one he liked. But it was obvious that we were coming at it from a different <clears throat> angle because our edits were quite different. Yeah. And I'd sort of, at the time, I'd just done Matt Calrick's demo for him. And... um I sort of enjoyed the experience. It was something that I hadn't really, I'd done a lot of it, but it's something I'd never really thought of as something that I enjoyed um, because I enjoy the creative process more, but it really became a creative process. Mm. So um, it's also so, yeah. different because in Australia, demos are usually work you've done and you just do a comp out of the, your finished jobs where it's quite obvious that in America, it's a different, kettle of fish where you know you actually go in there and scripts are written for you and you it, you go from scratch which we don't do here so that was something interesting for both Robo and I to do that for the you know for the first time really I mean that's always been my you know for my days in radio that's what you did you know even back in the states it was like if you've done a lot of commercials I was a production director and and on air and it's like oh I love this spot I love this spot and yeah. and and chunking them together and mm -hmm. uh you know, times have changed. I don't. I don't quite understand why they have to be produced this way. But, um, but why do you guys think demos are important? It's your business card, short and sweet. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's what you lay on the table to say, this is who I am. This is what I do. I, I don't think there's anything more important for a voiceover artist than a good demo. I can't think of anything. Yeah. Well, the demo is the is the calling card, and uh, but it also has to reflect things you can do not right. things you would like to do because yeah. there is nothing worse for someone like Robbo or any production guy or producer engineer than booking a talent based on their demo and realize they can't actually replicate it in the studio. Yeah. That's, I, that's bad. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the thing that I've heard a lot too, is that, you know, people, it's like they record it and they record it in a studio. You know, they, they're not in their own home studio and you know, then it's like, oh, we hired you, but they do it from home, and it's like, oh crap, you yeah. know. And but you've got to be able to reproduce what you do on a demo, mm -hmm. in a in a gig. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm sure there are many people that have who don't understand that, didn't realize that, and uh, you know, it's important. Which is why George and I are so adamant about people having a really good home studio because everything everything's being done from home studios now. Yeah. And uh, so it's really important to do a demo with who you are and what you sound like uh, without yeah. too much, uh, you know, finagling to it. I think uh, there's two things for me that sort of come from that is the, the first thing that we talk about a lot and, and the three sort of cornerstones of what we do and, and, the, and the, the sort of the markers when we're judging what we're writing or what we're working on, whether we're on the right track is, is we have repeatable. So obviously you must be able to repeat your demo. Demo, believable. I've got to, as a listener, I've got to believe that it's you and you're capable of doing that. And the other one is creativity. And creativity is sort of not the creativity you're probably thinking about. The creativity we're talking about is finding those reads that maybe you didn't know you had um, and also reflecting what's currently happening in the market um, yeah. in terms of voiceover and what they're choosing and what they're looking for. Um, and, and that's sort of a big thing. And, I, and that's why I sort of, 
I'm constantly stunned sometimes when you go onto a website for, for someone who maybe you work with regularly, but the client wants to hear their demo and you're sending them a demo that's four or five years old. Yes. Um, yeah. and, and you know that, you know that that person is capable, like, you know, there's plenty of people in Australia I could think of who I wouldn't hesitate in booking, but, but you listen to their demo and if you didn't know them, you would sort of go, hmm. Yeah, I think we've moved past those sort of reads, and, and I'm not sure that you're the right person yeah. for this. Yeah. Um, if you're just joining us, our guests are Darren Robbo Robertson and Andrew Peters, and we're talking about getting your demos right uh, and, you know, and seeing what, what's the right process for doing that. If you have a question for them about demos, uh, all you have to do is go in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook Live or you're in YouTube or if you happen to be watching on LinkedIn or watching the smoke signals coming over the top of the hill. <laughs> you can drop them in the chat room. And uh, and I know that Jeff Holman is back there and he will relay those questions to us in a little bit. So listen carefully. It should raise some questions and you can ask. I got so a let's talk quick. OK, go for what, it, George. What for you guys was the most difficult part of the process. Was it? Was it the, the, the content writing or creation because, or the script writing? Um, is that, was, what was the most challenging? It's funny, we process? talked about that because um, we were talking about that just in general chatter when we were working with Dan recording this. Um, I, I'm the script writer um, and I've never, I've never worked as a copywriter, but for 35 years I've had to edit copywriters' scripts because clients have demanded that, you know, I want the phone number twice, plus the email address, plus the street address, yes. plus with the opening hours and everything else. So you come up with this 45 second script that you then have to make a 30. Um, and so I think I've learned the craft of, craft of writing scripts from having to do that um, in terms of organizing in a script and, and, and the tone of the, the script and all that sort of stuff. Um, and obviously, Coming from a, a radio imaging background as well, I'm writing a lot of promos and sweepers and all that sort of stuff. So, so yeah, oh, but yeah. It's, um, it, it's, it's part of the process that I sort of had the biggest imposter syndrome about, I guess, because while I'm comfortable writing a radio promo, I was sort of going, hmm, should I be writing some commercials? But the, the, the feedback so far has been brilliant. Um, yeah. You know, people sure. like Matt Calrick and stuff like that have, had some good results, so you sort of go, okay, well, maybe I should stop listening to that in in a voice. Well, you and have also, the background, yeah. like you said. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's right. that. Those years of writing those other types of work means you have writing chops and you have editing chops. So yeah. you just have to reshape that into the format that we're working with here. Yeah, and also, like you know, I'll get scripts sent to me, obviously. So I keep ones that I think are of value, and then we'll just rework that script. But the creative's mm -hmm. done as well. Yeah, it's kind of handy. So let's talk a little bit about your process, and then we can show a little bit of video about what we did uh, last week when we were cutting a, a demo for me. And we did it pretty quick. I mean, sometimes you'll work for a week on uh, with somebody who is like, okay, we'll do another spot today. We'll do another one. We went through the – we were like less than an hour, uh, yeah. and but it still gave us plenty of time to do the interplay that needed to be done to direct it and get it done. So I was pretty Im impressed with that. But individually, what is your what is your process? I mean, Andrew, when you're when you're starting to do this, what is your thought process when you're working with somebody? Firstly, I will check out that person and just find whatever demos I can find of theirs and just have a listen and try and find something that I I believe is their strength. Or something I can hear, there's something in their voice that tells me they can go a certain direction. And then that sort of, that's something I will work on with that person when we're going through the process of recording. Mm -hmm. that's, that's how I go. And, the, and the, once we get online and start recording, it all becomes kind of obvious which way we're going to go. So, Robbo, yeah. do you, you, you're the same though, aren't you? Yeah, I'm pretty much the same. For me, the magic comes with, we do a, a, a pre- demo, let's call it an interview, but it's really just a chance for AP and I to catch up and goof around and you know, have a bit of fun. Yeah. But, um, but, but part of the process is, is a bunch of legitimate questions that give us an idea of what's in your head and what you want from a demo. And the question that, that always sort of interests me the most 
um, and, and I think leads to some of the results in terms of happiness of people with their demos is, is sort of what's a read that you, that you think you're good at that you don't get booked for. Um, and for me, that's a big one because, because there's these un, sort of un, unearthed talent that doesn't get to their chance to come to the forefront because people can't, don't know they can, someone can do that read. Um, and so when they have the chance to go, well, you know, shit, I really like, you know, I really like, I think we talked about school teacher with you. Um, you know, I really like that sort of thing or something like that. Then you can sort of pluck that out and you can write a script around that and give them the opportunity to put it out there. Um, yeah. in amongst work that still is, you know, booked regularly and, and, and the rest of the demo works around it in terms of being current and, and, um, and bookable. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's, let's take a quick look. It's about four and a half minutes of the interplay we had. It's just me and me and Andrew, and we were talking about uh, a Jim Beam spot that we were doing. Let me just play that and uh, let's see. Where is it? Right here. Yeah. <laughs> were you on your best behavior? Hope so. <laughs> it was L. Okay. Hey, we always believed the welcoming spirit was a small town thing. Turns out we were wrong. From the places that don't have a name to the bright lights of a world moving at a frantic pace. Wherever Jim Beam is welcome, you'll be welcome too. Okay. To the bright lights of a world moving at a frantic pace. Okay, I'm going to take you somewhere else on this one. Right. Um, I want you to get in right into the mic and um, just get really sort of breathy and gravelly and just, like I wrote Sam Shepard. Okay. <laughs> it's not going to take that long. <laughs> but um, So something like I was talking about the Sam Shepard kind of vibe, you know, the... Right. Well, Sam Shepard um, is, he's got he's so, more of a baritone upper baritone type of voice not really a deep voice but I yeah the style but you know what i mean there's that kind of delivery that that, that sort of uh who's the, who's the other actor that always does all these ads the mumbling not matthew modine anyway whatever, whatever the guy is um but it's kind of that in in yes close mic you know i'm at a bar smoky yeah, uh, that kind yeah, of thing right. one up here. yeah Here's some Tom, <laughs> yes, to some Tom Waits in the background. Right. Okay. Exactly. Tom Waits right. in the background, indeed. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Okay. <coughs> you still rolling here? But, uh, just, we'll just wait for... Uh, okay. I don't know. I think he wants to mute so we don't bleed everywhere. So I'll just okay. wait for uh, Robbo. Hmm. We always believed in the welcoming spirit was a small town thing. Turns out, we were wrong. From the places that don't have a name, to the bright lights of a world moving at a frantic pace. Wherever Jim Beam is welcome, you'll be welcome too. I reckon we could even go further and bring the projection back and just get really breathy and into okay. the mic. I just want to... Get an idea of how that's going to sound. All right. Jim Beam, take five. We always believed in the welcoming spirit was... The welcoming spirit was a small... I don't know why I keep throwing that away. Okay. <laughs> we always believed that the welcoming spirit was a small town thing. Turns out we were wrong. From the places that don't have a name to the bright lights of a world moving at a frantic pace. Wherever Jim Beam is welcome, you'll be welcome too. Okay. I reckon pull it back just a bit more and then we'll play with the last line. I'd like to come back, slow it down and, and get it really 
We always believed the welcoming spirit was a small town thing. Turns out we were wrong. That kind of thing. Yep. Jim Beam, take five. <laughs> we always believed the welcoming spirit was a small town thing. Turns out we were wrong. From the places that don't have a name, to the bright lights of a world moving at a frantic pace. Wherever Jim Beam is welcome, you'll be welcome too. I reckon, uh, just want to do the tag. Wherever Jim Beam is welcome, you'll be welcome too. Wherever Jim Beam is welcome, you'll be welcome to. <laughs> the concentration in your face is incredible, <laughs> I, I think. <laughs> it was so dramatic. Yeah. It's acting. <laughs> but that, uh, that, that was a, fun. Yeah, it was a great process because you know, the thing that's probably the hardest for most people uh, doing demos or even just doing a, a remote session is the, the, a lot of people aren't used to being directed, whereas mm -hmm. I love being directed. It's yeah. Self-direction is so hard. Yeah. And to just give you know, a little, having what I refer to as a meta person mm -hmm. to really listen to what you're saying and say, all right, bring it up, take it down, you know, that sort of thing. You can't do that in your own head. It's, I mean, some people can. I mean, I've, I've got a problem that I, I, I have to close my eyes when listening to other people because I get, I don't, I get too distracted. Uh, so something like that where it's just, it was totally auditory. I mean, cause I, I mean, we could, we, I can't remember. Were we looking at each other when we did yeah. this? Yeah. yeah. Well, um, we were, yeah, we, I think we were. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, I was, and George, you were right. McConaughey is. Yeah, yeah, I was <laughs> trying to think of yeah, reading but, uh, the script. Yeah, the, the thing I find really interesting, and I've talked to Robbo about this too. We're trying to find a language. We still haven't worked out a language yet. So when we're trying to direct people, <laughs> as you can tell by that bit of footage, you know, it's like I'm trying to. I know it's in my head, but I'm trying to explain what it is that's in my head, yeah. and trying to come up with something that will click with you and resonate with you. So you go, oh, I know what you mean. You mean blah 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 blah. That's the trick, I think. And, Di di direction is the key to the whole process, though, that Andrew and I have come up with. And the whole reason uh, that we're doing this, and, and, and I guess the whole point of difference to us and anyone else who could do you a demo, is that you're getting, you're getting two perspectives. So you're getting a perspective from a guy who sat in the producer's slash director's chair for 35 years, um, audio engineer's desk, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And so I have the knowledge that I've learned um, from working with directives and uh, directors and, 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 you know, um, art directors and all that sort of stuff um, and directing sessions myself. Um, and so I sort of know what's in their head, but then you get Andrew as well, who is a voiceover artist and, and sort of has the art and, and the understanding of different styles of reads and different ways of selling a script. So you get him from that perspective and you put that together uh, and you've got the, in, the entire sort of gamut of, of possibilities. Yeah, we're covering the whole room, basically. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with, uh, with Robbo and Andrew here about uh, making demos and uh, they're joining us all the way from the land of Oz. Or I don't think they refer to it as the land. They just refer to it as Oz. 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 Yeah. <laughs> and Andrew's it, the wizard. Right. Yeah. If you've got a question, <laughs> that used to be my nickname, actually, <laughs> yeah. the wizard. If if you've got a question for them, throw it in the chat room right now because we'd love to hear from you guys. And uh, I think a little bit later we're going to take a poll on which which version you guys like most because they get the final say, don't they? They yeah. Yeah. well, not necessarily. Just because they <laughs> like it doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to go with it. But <laughs> but you know, it's good to have uh, so, you know some outside opinions of it. Putting but, your career on yeah. the line. By, yeah. by Paul. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. So let, let's yeah. talk a little bit about, about what goes into a, a good demo. Uh, what is it that, 
what are the the right elements to a demo that you know you guys want to achieve when uh, you know you're you're working with somebody? What is it you want to achieve with them, and 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 how do you go about getting what you think they want? I can and tell you the first thing that doesn't go into it that we always <laughs> joke about is putting your ID at the front. <laughs> yes. Yeah. G'day. G'day. I'm James, and I'm a voiceover artist, and I love collecting goldfish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah. what? Gone. Next. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bite. Next. <laughs> it's, uh, I think the key with the demo is definitely the, that first five, ten seconds is the, the hook. You, you, if you haven't got them then, you're not going to keep them. So, yeah. so that first spot has got to take that person who's listening on that journey. You've got yeah. to grab their attention. You, you, yeah. It's got to be the, the, first, the first track has to be current. The first track has to be strong. The first track has to show your voice in its best possible light. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, that to, to me, that's the key. Because I've sat in so many casting sessions where they haven't, the, the, the voice hasn't even got a sentence out and they've already gone to the next track. Yeah. They've made up their mind in that amount of time. You know, people go, oh, 60 seconds. No, I've got 60. No, you don't. You've got five if you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you don't grab them by the gorgle in the first three to five seconds, it's, it's like gone. You know, Which yeah. is why name and 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 hobbies and all that stuff at the front stumps me. Every people time. actually do that. Well, yes. They do, yeah, yeah, a lot. Well, <laughs> sadly, it seems to have. It's been a discussion on forums down here in Australia for the last about a month. I think it. Someone dropped it in. What you know? Should I put a? Should I do an intro on my demo? It's like mm -hmm. it's not nineteen ninety anymore. We're not. No delivering I think, comp cds anymore yeah that's right i think yeah. that was we've talked about this i think that in the days when you were casting off a cd um it probably had its place but but these days you're staring at a file with a name on it anyway you don't need to do it no yeah it's even like uh, even with auditions i you very rarely are asked to slate anymore it's straight into the read Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've noticed that. that and, and most agencies are all saying that no slates. Like, yeah. Thank mm -hmm. God. That's yeah. Because you know, you know, a slate is really awkward. It is. And it doesn't show you in the best light because you, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know anyone that's comfortable doing an intro or a slate. Because you know you've got to do this read in a certain style. Do you do your slate or your intro in a certain style? I don't know. Yeah, there's, there's no hard and fast rules on that. It's, no. You know, it's... Mm. I mean, but as you were saying, it's it's changed because we used to do it all the time, and now it's like no, no slates, and yeah. uh, why why would you want to do a slate? You know, and some coaches will say, well, just try and do it in the character, so it, you know, so it goes in. A lot of that is kind of old school now. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think the other thing though that goes into a, a, a making a great demo is is knowing what you want to do with your demo. I think understanding that before you even start the process is, is getting you a long way to, to getting a great demo. I mean, we talked mm. with you about, you know, you had a lot of retail, hard sell stuff. You, you sort of, we talked about how the sort of man next door sort of thing was something that you could do and do well, but you didn't really get booked for a lot. <clears throat> so we talked about that and that's how we came up with the, the direction for your demo. So, you know, uh, uh, spots, specific spots aside, I mean, I think that's an important place to start and getting a great demo as well is understanding what you want to do with it. Do you want to get an agent? Do you want to get booked? You know, there's two different things you could do with a demo there straight away um, and two different directions to take it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that's a, that's a big starting point as well. Yeah. It's funny because demos these days are really used to find an agent. Because a lot of the work you see, like we just mentioned before, is scripts arriving in your inbox based on your age, gender, whatever, um, as an audition. So they, they haven't heard you before. They just wanted to get an audition. Right. But if you're looking f to get, you know, maybe a step up into a better agent, then make sure you deliver a really good demo because it just may do the trick for you. Yeah. Once again, if you've got a question for our guests, throw it in the <laughs> chat room and uh, we'll get to that in just a little bit. One one of the things that we talked about, uh, and once you had we had mixed them all down, was the order of the spots in there. Because I've always been of the opinion, 
having done many demos, uh, you know, for me, the, it's important to have contrast of reads that it's, you know, if you're going to catch them real quick and you're, you were able to hold their attention through the first spot, which is never an easy thing to do because they're probably listening to a, you know, a bunch of different demos. It's got a contrast. So a spot's going to end and then a different type of read in there. What we did with, with this one is I specifically wanted a conversational read. Uh, like we were saying, it's like, you know, I do a lot of retail stuff, a lot more announcery type stuff. Um, but I wanted to show that I can do the conversational thing that, that we can talk the way you and I are talking now and, and make that happen. And then the spots you picked really, really worked for that. But how do you pick the order? I mean, aside from the discussion we had, well, what about putting this one here and putting that one there? And well, it was funny because you, um, when we talked, once we finished the spots and we selected which ones we were going to go with and Frankenstein a couple. And then it was the discussion of what's the order going to be. And we got your order, Dan, which we, we kept. And then after you'd left the call, Robbo and I said, no, don't agree with that order. We're going to change that. And we both agreed that the, the Jim Beam spot was the hero and that was going to be at the top. Um, I think you had Jim Beam second or third from memory, Dan. I can't remember. Yeah. 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 It's just the way I think. It's like, okay, yeah. where's, where's the contrast here? Where's, yeah. you know, yeah. a, where, what's a little more upbeat? That one yeah. was like Jim Beam. You know, yeah. Um, can, I, can I just tell you, Dan, please. Just, just so you know that uh, your demo for Jim Beam has gone on our demo for voiceover demos. <laughs> oh, that's a good sign. Yeah, for uh -huh. some reason, I always end up doing a liquor spot on my demos. I'm not exactly sure why everybody <laughs> throws those in there. It's because when we hear your voice, something, Dan, Dan, just something we should know. <laughs> you just want to get drunk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get into listening to uh, what we finally came up with uh, after a quick break. And again, if you've got a question, throw it in the chat room because we want to hear from you and your thoughts on uh, – I'm recording a demo and uh, any other thoughts you have on those and any questions you have for our guests. So put them in there right now. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back here on voiceover body shop. So do not go away. We'll be right back. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane, the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body Wait. shop. So this week, we asked our great sponsor, Harlan Hogan at voiceoveressentials.com, what do you want to tell your customers this week? Well, Harlan said, how about a free VO baseball cap with their embroidered VO voice bubble on the front and their voiceover essential slogan, as heard on TV, on the back? It tells everybody what you do. Voiceoveressentials.com VO baseball caps are 100% cotton chino twill, garment washed, unstructured caps manufactured by Stylemaster and feature sewn eyelets, pre-curved visor and metal adjustable tri-glide buckle with leather adjusting strap. And guess what? They'll send one to the first 25 viewers who email their VoiceOver Essentials customer service head, Terry Lee at terry.lee at voiceoveressentials.com to get your VoiceOver Essentials VO baseball cap. Offer is only good in the continental U.S. Aw, sad for the folks down under. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's time to talk about Source Elements, the creators of Source Connect, and a tool that we at the Pro Audio Suite use for every single episode. It allows Robbo to produce our show completely remotely with all of our voices coming directly into Pro Tools we can hear each other beautifully. The quality is extremely high. And we also have the amazing ability to keep everything backed up, no matter what happens on the internet, via the queue manager. So at the end of our session, and we record sometimes for an hour or more, that audio is being automatically backed up and transferred over to Robbo's machine from all of our computers in the background. It's amazing technology. It sounds great. Um, the audio quality you get over Source Connect is essentially indistinguishable from being on the end of a mic cable. It really is that good, and it's quite a remarkable tool. And now with the new version of Source Nexus coming out soon, 
it's going to be easier than ever for Robbo to bring other sources of audio and other platforms in and out of a production for seamless production when you've got guests in other locations, uh, you've got directors, you've got uh, the clients in many cases listening, wanting to hear and even sometimes see what's going on and give approval. That can all be done with Source Nexus and Source Connect tied together. It's quite an amazing platform. But if you want to get started, head over to source-elements.com and you can get your 15-day free trial. Get yourself started and running and learn what Source Connect can do for you and your career as you're growing your business into another higher tier. Thanks for your support, Source Elements. Let's get on to the Q&A right after this. Well, hey there, it's David H. Lawrence with VO Heroes. And wouldn't it be cool if there was a very simple tool, drag and drop tool, that would guarantee that the audio you need to upload to ACX or any other audiobook platform is perfectly set up in terms of the tech standards, the root mean square normalization, the peak normalization, the noise floor? Guess what? There is. And I want you to have it absolutely free. It's called Audio Cupcake. And you can find it at audiocupcake.com. I helped create this software. It was built to my specs and my standards for when I do audiobooks, and I know it's going to work for you. Now, it's only available for Macintosh uh, because you Windows users, you have the ability to use other tools that work for you. But in this case, you edit your final raw WAV file for a chapter, you drop it onto Audio Cupcake, and out comes the 192K mono MP3 file you can upload immediately. That's audiocupcake.com, audiocupcake.com. I hope you love it. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom, VOBS.TV. And we're back with Robbo and Andrew, and we're talking about demos. All right, well, here's what I'd like to do. Let's mm -hmm. play the two mixes that we did, my mix and your mix. And then uh, Jeff, sitting there in the chat room, let's take a vote. You know, after we play both of them, tell us which one you, you choose. And we won't say which one is which. How's that? <laughs> we may have already given it away. I'm this gets sure. more and more competitive. The process between AP and I, just because we haven't really talked about that, just quickly, is, is, is we both do our own versions of your reads. And, and then without referring to each other, we take the voiceover session and, 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 and do our own edits of each spot. And then send them back to you. And as you know, it then comes to you to go, well, I prefer A over B because they come unlabeled. You don't know who's done what. And so AP and I are always like, shit, he got more than me this time. <laughs> <laughs> or I'll be sending Robbo a text going, was I A or B? Which one? Yeah. So You're now, B, now not only are we going to do that, now we're going to go, okay, let's, let's throw the mixes out there. <laughs> Putting us on the line. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, let's put George to work here. Why don't you play the first one there? So this is this is the the final mix down their a. choice or somebody's choice. I'm not sure whose choice. This is letter A. <laughs> letter A. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Letter A. You've sacrificed plenty to build your business. From the moment your feet hit the floor to the moment you turn out the lights. It's all you think about. From the places that don't have a name to the bright lights of a world moving at a frantic pace. Wherever Jim Beam is welcome, you'll be welcome too. We don't have everything. We have your thing. Welcome to your Walmart. When we thought of the future, we imagined a car with instant power. A car that drives itself. A car that just plugs in. How far can your investments take you? At Standard Personal Banking, we go the extra mile to meet your financial goals. From your children's education to your dream retirement. John Perkins Medical. Not just for us. For all of us. Ah. Uh. Wow, that, that piano cue. <laughs> now, 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 I remember, you know, we had one piece of music for that, and I said, no, 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 we need something like light piano but positive. Yeah, and with a note, with some notes on the top. Some, right, yeah, yeah not not chords, but just single notes and stuff. Yeah. And you know, these are the types of things I don't think other people would have thought about. But having you know, having produced things like this, it's like, eh, 
Was I right? Oh, look, I, I think I there's think credit so. to... Yeah. Th th this is the thing about audio. It's such a personal thing. Is Absolutely. there a right and a wrong? I don't think there is. I think there's just personal taste, and that's all you can go with. Yeah. Um, I, I think both iterations work. Yeah. Absolutely. There's nothing wrong with yeah. either of them. Okay. All right, let's play B. We always believed the welcoming spirit was a small town thing. Turns out we were wrong. Wherever Jim Beam is welcome, you'll be welcome too. When we thought of the future, we imagined a car with instant power, a car that drives itself, a car that just plugs in. You've sacrificed plenty to build your business. From the moment your feet hit the floor to the moment you turn out the lights. It's all you think about. How far can your investments take you? At Standard Personal Banking, we go the extra mile to meet your financial goals. From your children's education to your dream retirement. We don't have everything. We have your thing. Welcome to your Walmart. And that was B. Okay, so now everybody vote. Did you like A or B? And put it in the chat room, and Jeff oh, will compilate got a, those. Got a B already. Ah, uh, look. Similino. <laughs> Don't stare at that stuff. Just pay attention to what I'm telling. The money's, the check's in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was definitely fun doing that. And, uh, yeah. it, it, I, you know, I was pretty, pretty happy with the, you know, either one of those uh, because it was exactly what I was looking for. Let's, let's have a good conversational read. None of those sounded announcery or anything like that. And we did them so fast. Now, now, granted, I've been doing this, you know, since, you know, the Nixon administration, but uh, I have a little bit of experience. But other people who are perhaps newer need to understand that they've got to be conversational like that. We got a bunch of questions, though. Uh, so, George, why don't you take off with those and let's give those to our wonderful guests here. All right. First one, while the votes are still coming in over here. Um, Fiber Jazz says, don't know much about what commercial casting directors are looking for in other countries, but it helped to work with a coach prior to creating a demo for that market or other sources of info. And did you do any special studying or training to develop your demo coaching skill or did it just come naturally to you with after many years of your own via work? So two-parter. I say for the latter part of the question, I think it kind of comes naturally through experience. Um, you know, I've been doing this for, well, about the same as you, Dan, I think. We were probably uh, late 70s bloomers. Yeah. Um, so that, that's that part of the question. And as far as um, different markets, I think it, it's your voice. It's, it's what, you, you know, what you do. It's got nothing to do with necessarily what people are looking for. Well, it does to a point, but but you're not going to build a demo that's not you to suit somebody else, if that makes sense. Maybe yeah. maybe it would help influence the music you might choose. I don't know. Is that something that goes into it? Well, see, the music the music is really only there to support what the script is for, to give it some sort of reference point, I suppose. Yeah. I mean, the whole, the, the, the other trick to creating a good demo, I guess, coming back to an earlier question that Dan threw out there was making sure that the demo is about your voice and not about my production, um, yeah. which is why, you know, any demo that I ever make, you will, will rarely have a sound effect, you know, unless it's absolutely necessary. I think Mimo's demo, I, I put a car in there because I wanted to have it, make it sound like a TV spot. It was for, a, a, I think it was for a car. It was Chevy, and, uh, and, and I for Chevy, and and, yeah. and so I sort of I I imagined this TV spot that had like this nice mellow music track underneath, but it was giving the impression that Dad was travelling home, and so you could hear this car driving throughout, and then you can hear Dad walk up the steps at the end of the spot, and the door opens, and you hear a little girl's voice saying "Daddy," just sort of quietly down in the background. But that was just to give the illusion that this was again believable, that this could have actually gone to air. Um, yep. So, yeah, so keeping it simple and, and the music is really only there to support a vibe for whatever it is you're trying to do with the spot. So mm -hmm. just keeping it simple is really important. And I, I think also what Robbo does, if you probably noticed on, on that demo or the two we just listened to, 
the the voice is the hero. So in the mix, the voice has got to be the the standout part of of yeah. the demo. Yeah. Yeah. How many um, times have I, you know, played one for my wife and she goes, "Where's your voice? <laughs> yes, <laughs> Which exactly. one's you?" Yeah. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> nice guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Some of them are, are heavily overproduced, and I, yeah, I yeah, was yeah. just thrilled with the way you guys did that because it was yeah. it was highlighting what I did and not what, you know, the music, like you said, just sort of supports it. Yeah. yeah. The, other, the other thing I would just in say in terms of answering that question, too, in terms of experience is 35 here, 45 there, that's 80 years of experience. I don't know that you could get much more experience sitting in a classroom. So yeah. I don't know that... Yeah. that you know, yeah, studying yeah, but, is the be-all and an end-all somehow. Yeah. And also we've seen, you know, seen, as, as you do, just because of time, you see things come, see things go. I mean, you see the change in fashion and we've certainly seen a major change in technology and the yeah. expectations that, um, you know, are put on us now. So yeah. And that's, all the, those that's the other thing too, play. yeah. I mean, you know, AP's recording daily with agencies. I'm still working with Clemingers, Saatchis, you know, all these global agency so we're sort of at the coal face every day seeing yeah. what's coming next and and what's changing in terms of styles and what they're looking for right yeah. uh important. question from someone whose name rhymes with orange fred north go figure uh <laughs> do they specialize in do you guys specialize in a certain genre and coaching mm -hmm. and coach through it are there accent and vernacular differences ever are, are, are accents and vernacular differences ever an issue no. I mean, we worked with Memo. Memo's Mexican. Yeah. Uh, Matt Carrick. Well, Matt Carrick's probably a classic he's, he's an Aussie. example. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Matt, Matt's an Aussie doing American accent voiceovers and big time. Um, you know, so, so no, I, I don't see any of that as a barrier. No. All righty. George? This one's from Craig Davis. He says, good point on the dated material because voices also change. And with age and the length of a demo, um, is it 60s, 90s? I'm an old radio guy and did exactly what Dan explained, but I do realize I have to be updated. 60, 60s is 60 the target. Seconds. 70 yeah. if you've got some really good stuff that you feel like you have to pack in there. Mm. But as we said, I mean, it, it, even if they get through the first five seconds, they've really made up their mind by... 20, 25 seconds, and the rest is, is there if they want it, but I can't remember the last time I played a demo in a casting session all the way through for someone. I've, I, the only, I, can say, I can tell you exactly the only demo I've actually listened right, right the way through, and funnily enough, it was Matt Cowrie. And this was years ago when I first came across Matt. I don't know how we crossed paths, but I listened to one of his demos, and, and it blew me away because he was doing everything in American accent, I just could not believe it. It was flawless, and I listened all the way through. But that's an exception, not the rule. And we're talking mm -hmm. about a freak, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is. Yeah. Talented guy, very talented guy. <laughs> Indeed. Um, I think there was a part two. It might have gotten, it was on the next page or the next line, saying what sells better, a video demo or audio demo? Is a video demo needed these days? Distracting. Yeah, you just want him to focus on your voice. Yep. You don't want him to look at you and go, oh, my God, he's too old. He's too young. Exactly. He's not right. Yeah. He's, he, 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 he might be gay. She might be this. You know, and that's yeah. no offense to anybody out there. But, you know, these are the assumptions that people make when they look yeah. at you. So, yeah. no. Nah, well, I think, I think you're talking about actual production with video content that goes with the voiceover. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I but then again, it's still distracting. So. Yeah. No. And the other trick that I would throw in there, too, is as much as possible – um, keep keep your product out of there. Um, like people love to go, hey, look, you know, Jim Beam, Chrysler, blah blah blah. But the problem that you have there is all of a sudden it's conflict. All of a sudden, it's, oh, hang on, we're casting for sh for you know, uh, I don't know. Having whoever. said that, having said car that, car company we, A, yeah. he's done car company B, so move yeah. on. Having said um, that, we did actually include Jim Beam. Yeah, uh, but I, I, don't know, I don't know that it's necessarily you have to do it on everything. Yeah. But, but, you know, as I, would I do a demo where every spot had a brand attached, especially if it was a big brand? I, I don't know that yeah. I would um, for that reason. Yeah. You have to be yeah. a little bit careful, a bit mindful. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jeff Holman asks, and this is a great question, do you always put a music bed 
under the entire demo. Now we had there was different cuts of music in there, you know, which you know to me is like the most important thing. I remember when I when I was learning to do commercials and a and a, a the operations manager said, "Okay, if you're going to do commercials, here's our rules: two pieces of music with every commercial." You know, wow! So something had to be something. You know, there had to be a contrast in the middle. Were you doing that live to tape? Uh, yeah. It's like <laughs> hold the record down. <laughs> yeah, that's lift, right. Lift, lift the finger yes, up. Yeah. We were talking about that the other day. We we're talking about doing drop edits on on yeah, analog yeah. tape. You know, would we still have the muscle memory to get it right first right, time? Yeah, exactly. I don't know that I would. Yeah, Pro yeah, Tools yeah. makes life too easy. Yeah. Kids these days get it too easy. Too easy. But it was funny. You talk about that, like, you know, you're queuing up a record and reading live and mixing as straight to tape. You know, that was mm -hmm. how I kicked off in the, in yeah, the 70s. I think we all, we've been there, done that. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Music all the way through, uh, mostly, mostly. If, if, if a cold read is called for, sure. But I wouldn't do a 60-second demo cold, no. No. Okay. George? All right. Grace Newton says, uh, what is the most important element of a video game demo? You guys have done, you done any this? video game demos? No. I haven't. I haven't done any. I've, I've heard plenty. Um, I, I think it's selling your ability to come up with a character that's believable. Selling your ability to come up with a character full stop. Uh, versatility in general i think would be the biggest thing for video games um and, yeah. and and if you're recording it in your own studio making sure that it's sound quality wise it's as good as it can be as well because you know yeah. the last thing a video game editor wants to get is a bunch of distortion on the pieces where you you have to yell and scream and then you know three noise reduction plugins on one track because the air conditioning noise and everything else going on in the background when you've got to be softly spoken. So yeah. they're the two big things I hear on gaming demos is, is just not understanding what you're doing in terms of the recording. And also um, the other thing is your room. If you're screaming in a room and your room is not yeah. particularly good, you're going to hear it. Yeah, right. That's right. Yeah, because yeah. the louder you talk, the more the ca the the... the Acoustics of the room come into play. Yeah. Sorry, what's that, Dan? <laughs> <laughs> Terry Briscoe asks, and this sort of plays into that, are there instruments that tend to overpower the voice more than others? Saxophone. Yeah. Saxophone's uh -huh. the killer. Uh, sometimes guitar, um, but saxophone is the one that, yeah. In fact, I found a, a really cool plug-in for those geeks out there, just because there's Pro Audio Suite out here just for one second. Um, and the name of it's just gone completely out of my head. Uh, track Spacer. And, and it, you, 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 you put the plug in on your music track and you show it your voiceover in this, what's called a side chain. So the plug in's working on my music track, but it's listening to the voiceover. And what it's doing is it's putting an EQ curve in around your voiceover. So effectively, it's only ducking those frequencies. So if you have it a saxophone, for example, and it's smack in the middle of the voiceover, well, what Trackspace is doing is saying, let's take it down a bit so we can make the voiceover the hero. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. neat. Yeah, that's clever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One last thing. Let me, let me throw the script. Now, Andrew, I was looking at your website. There's like 50 demos on there. Uh, <laughs> I know. That's because like, Look, I'm, I'm slack, slack, slack. Yeah. How many demos should somebody have, really, on their website? <laughs> Not as many as I've got, probably. <laughs> like walking into <laughs> a hardware store. It's like, how much can I buy today? <laughs> yeah. Or AP in a, in, a, in, a, in a studio gear shop. Like, yeah, yeah, well, the job like is that. I've probably got, yeah, probably got <laughs> equal amounts of microphones as, as I've got demos, unfortunately. Um, which says more about my character than anything else. But I, look, I don't know. It depends what... Uh, what genres you're looking at working in? I yeah. would probably make a demo for each of your genres. Yeah, all right. Yeah, where, where your strengths lie? I mean, if you've got, I think for me, for me anyway, a, a strong overall one, and then and then a couple of other ones that demonstrate your other strengths or other, as we talked about before, other sort of um, strengths that you have that people may not know, know about that you can use to highlight those as well. I mm -hmm. don't know. that. I think maybe 50 is overkill, maybe five or six. But the other mm -hmm. thing that we do with our demos, we because we each spot is actually produced, so it's, each spot is a you know, 15, 30-second spot. <clears throat> so when we deliver the uh, demo, 
we deliver the comp and then we deliver each spot individually. So if someone, you know, sends you a message saying, have you got a spot that where you do a blah, 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 you go, yeah, and you can send them one of the mm -hmm. spots. Yep. Okay. There's yeah, but we've got just a couple of minutes here. We've got to figure out who won. It's <laughs> <laughs> easy, B. B's the It looks yeah, like there was a lot of bees. <laughs> yeah, it, looks like, it looks like the bees won. Uh, Jeff Holman, who won? Well, you got to unmute it. yourself. Take, turn the microphone on. Audio engineering 101. There we go. There you go. The answer the is... Bees, the bees won handily. It's the bees' knees. There we go. And, and who whose was that? Ours. <laughs> Ours. <laughs> Sorry, Dan. We nah, won. What are you, you going to do? <laughs> well, at least you know for sure. That's right. I'm yeah. feeling justified now. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, if guys, guys, if they want to get a hold of you and talk to you about getting a really great demo done, where do they go? Demosthatwork.com. All righty. There's the address down there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Guys, it's been a pleasure uh, having you on the show, and it was just a riot last week putting this all together. And uh, yeah, a hoot. Yeah. That's right. That one's going on my website. Beautiful. That's nice. fabulous. Good on, my, yeah. on my Wovo demo player. Which version, anyway. <laughs> What's that? B. Which version? B. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I might put both on. Who knows? There you go. You never know. <laughs> Is there a blind AB mode where it'll play one or two at random? You know, it'll yeah. pick one at random. Oh, yeah. hey, yeah. I'll hey, try could, that. Like, <laughs> what do they? What do the <laughs> web developers do? They um, you know, they test AB test yeah, all the websites testing, and all that sort yeah. of stuff. You yeah. could do the same yeah. thing. Yeah. You can do a month of one and a month of the other and see what happens. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We'll see what I book anyway. Guys, yeah. thanks so much for being with us tonight. It was uh, just a pleasure. Thank you for having us. See you, fellas. Appreciate it. All right, we'll be right back and uh, to say goodbye, but re-rack it for Tech Talk, which you can listen to live and ask your questions to. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. Your dynamic voiceover career requires extra resources to keep moving ahead. There's one place where you can explore everything the voiceover industry has to offer. That place is voiceoverextra.com. Whether you're just exploring a voiceover career or a seasoned veteran ready to reach that next professional level, stay in touch with market trends, coaching, products, and services while avoiding scams and other pitfalls. VoiceOver Extra has hundreds of articles, free resources, and training that will save you time and help you succeed. Learn from the most respected talents, coaches, and industry insiders when you join the online sessions bringing you the most current information on topics like audiobooks, auditioning, home studio setup, and equipment, marketing, performance techniques, and much more. It's time to hit your one-stop daily resource for voiceover success. Sign up for a free subscription to newsletters and reports. It's all here at voiceoverextra.com. That's voiceoverxtra.com. Well, it's my turn to talk about voiceactor.com. That's right, voiceactor.com. What do they do there? They make it easy for you to have your voice actor website like that. You can do it in, in 20 minutes. Uh, you know, just go in there. You don't have to have a lot of technical knowledge. It's not like using HTML or this coding or that coding. It's templates. And you go in and you pick a template you like. You can change the colors. You can change the template. You can put things where you want to put them. And it's all up to you. It's not up to some webmaster who's going to charge you 25 bucks for every comma you change or anything like that. It's free to start, actually. Uh, you can go in there, create an account, find a template that you like, set it up, put the colors you want, the pictures you want, and of course, most importantly, your demos. And you'll be online. And if you want to have a really your own URL, because it goes through voiceactor.com you have your own url it's twenty dollars a month and you have all sorts of uh, opportunities to make what you want and change what you want in your demo so go over to point put it up there again so voiceactor.com that's voiceactor.com to get your website up right now we 
are the World Voices Organization, also, also known, known as, as Wovo. We're the not-for-profit industry association of freelance voice talent. VoiceOver is a complex entrepreneurial business. Wovo is there to promote the professional nature of voice work to the public, to those already established in their voiceover practice, and to those who want to pursue voiceover as a career. Membership benefits include a supportive and creative community, a profile and demos on voiceover.biz, our searchable directory of vetted professional voice talent, our exclusive demo player for your personal website, our mentoring program, business resources, and our video library, our annual WovoCon conference, a fun and educational weekend with other members with, with a, a chance, chance to, to learn, learn and, and network, network, webinars, and great speakers, and weekly social chats with other members around the world. If your world is voiceover, make Wovo part of it. World Voices Organization. We, we speak, speak for those who speak, speak for a living. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. God, it was great talking and working with those guys. They, it was so much fun. You know. Now you when, see why I've been enjoying it, do, doing a show with them now, five years running. Absolutely. All righty. Well, next week on this very show, it'll be Tech Talk number 112. All right. It just goes on and on. We keep coming up with stuff. Uh, if... Uh, you want to work with one of us to help you with your home voiceover studio, you can go to georgethe.tech uh, slash VOBS for discounts and services. Yeah, that's right. So that's a, that, what, what kind of a discount do you get for that? Uh, currently it's a 10% off. That right. could change as the holidays come. So stay tuned. <laughs> but for now, 10% and off when you use VOBS fan 10. All righty. And uh, we have to mention IMDb. Dot me for Jeff Holman, too, but also. But you can go to my website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com, if you want to work with me on this kind of stuff. We need to thank our donors of the week, which are Greg Cooper. Grace Newton. Christopher Epperson. Robert Leadham. Stephen Chandler. Casey Clack. Jonathan Grant. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. A Doctor Voice. Antland Productions. Martha Kahn. 949 Designs. Sarah Borges, Philip Sapir, Brian Page, Rob Ryder, Shauna Pennington Baird, Don Griffith, Trey Mosley, Diana Birdsall, Maria Mackis, and Sandra Manwiller. Hey, join our mailing list. All you have to do is go to our website and it says, you know, sign up for our mailing list and you'll be on there. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, of course, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActor.com, and, and uh, WorldVoices.org, the Industry Association yes. of Freelance Voice Talent. Please join yes. today. Uh, we have, of course, thank Jeff Holman for doing a great job in the chat room and being the official vote counter, even though, you know, I didn't win that one. Uh, but uh, you didn't pay also, him enough, Jeff. I Clearly apparently damn. not. Yeah. Uh, Sue Merlino for getting it all done on the switchboard tonight and making sure that this has been technically magnificent. And of course, Lee Penny for just being Lee Penny. Uh, hey, we're going to re rock it and set it for tech talk. If you're still out there and listening or watching live, perfect opportunity for you to ask a question in our chat room so George and I can attack it and give you the right answer to it. Anyway, that's going to do it for us this week. Thanks for watching. Uh, this is not an easy business. It's you got to get everything right. You got to be a good actor. You got to have the right business plan. But your audio is important. But we've come to the conclusion that if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard, and I'm George Whittem, and this is Voiceover Body Shop or V O B S. Have a great week, everybody. Stay tuned for Tech Talk.